and finally, in terms of, um, well, actually, this isn't finally, but it, in terms of presenting what we think really works and why we're different is, is the theory behind it. And we've done, partially maybe because of my sort of academic background, a lot of studies on what's really working. Why do people learn very fast with us? And our key thing has been engagement. Uh, our students spend more time in English study learning than uh, the average person does playing computer games. Um, it's just slightly below TV watching, although I think it's now increasing so that for our students themselves, they, they spend a lot more time learning than they do watching TV. And so um, we spent a lot of time trying to explain to investors the power and importance of engagement. And finally, actually, I, I would say for, for some of our investors, the single most important thing was um, our traction at the point that we went to them. Uh, I had mentioned earlier that I considered whether or not to raise money um, a few years ago. And the major reason we decided against it, aside from the fact that it was just a terrible time to raise money, um, was that we didn't have revenues at that point, or we had very, very minor revenues, and we hadn't signed any large deals. So we really waited until we were right at the point where we were signing the deals, literally, and we were sitting down with investors so we could point to specific companies and say, hey, this is who's interested in us. Um, in some cases, they're putting their money where their mouth is, or they're putting money to support what we're doing. Um, and by the time we met with investors, we had about 1,000 students already studying with us. So they could see, uh, paying students, by the way, they could see actually what was happening with the students and that we were a real business. Um, and so I think that helped tremendously. I will go back just a, a, a second at that point, because as I'm thinking of the uh, traction idea, um, as I mentioned earlier, I, I've raised money before and I've had other businesses. I do think a lot depends on just where you are in the financing cycle. Um, I raised money in 1999 when I was in my late 20s, early 30s um, from an investor, met him once, had a breakfast with him at a diner, had a bagel, did not have a business plan or anything. I had another business that did well and he liked that idea. And within one hour, uh, this firm agreed to put up $17 million behind a company that didn't even exist at that point. So I do think that this time I haven't raised nearly as much. It really does depend where you are in the cycle. And you know, when things get hot, investors have a lot of money that they need to put out. And you know, that, that can happen. But at least for now, I think traction is a, is a very important component. Um, and maybe I was able to ra raise that initial money because ultimately people do invest in other people. Um, and I think that's important. I'm speaking by myself now. Uh, one of my colleagues is here, marketing manager, Marcus Allender. Most of the pitches that I gave, I gave with one of uh, two or three different team members. And I did that not only because I prefer not to be speaking by myself, but also because I think it's important for investors to see that you're not by yourself. There's a team there. Um, they're investing in the people, and they're investing in how well the people get along and how well they work together. So in terms of making the pitch, um, I put this up. This was a standard slide, the problem, followed by uh, the solution, which, which you'll see. Um, I always, and, and I think that's important for anyone who's looking to raise money, to frame things in terms of what's wrong or what are you solving. Um, and in the education world, that, that's a fairly easy thing to do. Uh, I think most people instinctively realize that education can and should be better. Um, and so I, I do stress that when you're making a pitch. Always think of what the problem that you're addressing is. Uh, we closed on our uh, round of investment about a month ago, and actually you're going to hear from Michael Blakey from uh, Evan Moore in uh, developments soon. Um, he, he's here, and it happens, I think it's coincidental. Uh, they were the lead investor uh, that we closed with. Along the way, we had, I think, three other investor groups that wanted to do the funding um, that we felt just weren't right for us. And in fact, our, our consideration was not necessarily who was putting in the most money or even who had, gave, had the best valuation. There was another group that uh, 
was willing to put in 50% more money at about 10% higher valuation. Our thought just overall was that they didn't fit as well with who we are and that they weren't as aligned with us in terms of growth and that ultimately, I think, when you're looking to raise money, you want an investor who's going to be on your side of the team and is going to be there to really help you out. And so, um, again, we just closed a month ago, and, and we'll see. But I think uh, they certainly gave the best sense of, you know, here's someone who will really, as board members, will really be there to help the business grow. Um, I wrote down just a few tips uh, for, uh, and I'm not actually sure who's here trying to raise money and who's here giving money, but maybe this is valuable for either one of you. Um, a few tips of what I think are key to, to raising money, and this was not just from this round, but um, from other times when I raised money. So if you're going to high-tech investors, and I assume that's primarily um, what we're looking at, or high-growth, early-stage investors, I think you either need to show a monetization model or, or evidence of monetization or huge traction. Um, along the way, I've come across a lot of entrepreneurs at the Dragon Den type pitches um, and other people, you know, just through meeting them. Um, and I found that one of the problems tends to be, for some of the people who aren't raising the money, is that they have a great idea, but they just haven't thought how you're going to make money from it. And I think that's okay if you're really, really large and you, you, know, you can bring in millions of users and you could say, I have this tremendous group of people who are really glued to what I'm doing. I will figure out how to make money from them. I think increasing, well, maybe now again, it's even more okay. But um, unless you have that, I don't think it's enough to say we can get a lot of people because our thing is so good. Um, or I think you need to very clearly show this is how we make money. For us, it was fairly easy because people pay for English classes all around the world. So we could point to what they pay to uh, pay for their English classes and where they pay for them. In Japan, for instance, we're 92% cheaper than comparable classes. Um, number two is know whom you're pitching to. Uh, angels and VCs are very, very different. I, I sat down um, with a couple of very, very, I mean, there's a lot of smart people on both, <laughs> in both those areas. I think they're just expectations and what they're looking for are different. Um, VCs tend to want much, much bigger returns, and they're willing to take much, much more risk. From an entrepreneur's standpoint, it's important to understand that. And that can be, well, at least for, for me, uh, a, a little, I don't know if it's frightening, but you kind of can under, you need to be aware that down the road, they're looking for their one out of 10 to do well, maybe one out of 100 or one out of 50 to do exceptionally well. Um, you flip that around and you think, well, nine out of 10 aren't going to do that great. And I mean, they're, they're honest with you. You sat down and I asked, you know, what, what is the failure rate? And they would say, well, about out of 10, five go out of business in, in a few years, and then four kind of just limp along and one will do well. So to me, that didn't seem like necessarily the best partner. Um, I think if you have very, very specific needs and you really want to raise a lot of money and they have certain entree, then it's probably worth it. Um, talking to them. Um, tip number three is to network and then just keep networking. Uh, again, you can go online and you can send out business plans, et cetera. I just did not find that the response rate to that was particularly good. It worked much, much better to talk to people, meet people through other people. Um, as I mentioned, the, we eventually raised money through a, a the Dragon Den pitch, but the other sources that uh, wanted to invest all came through someone knew someone who knew someone, and all, all leading to, by the way, either VCs, early stage investors, or, or angels. Um, know your market. Uh, along the way, I had to educate myself in the English language teaching market. That wasn't my background. I know virtual worlds pretty well, and I've done businesses. Um, but I think if you're going in front of a group of investors, you need to know the market a lot better than they do. Again, depending who you're talking to, I, I gave pitches where um, to, to some fairly prominent VCs, and one of them uh, one of the investors said to me, wait, 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 stop. 
I learned English, and it's not good to learn that way. And, and I think, you know, I, I said, okay, that's, you know, interesting. And he went on for about 10 minutes of his own experience. And I, and I think I learned something then. Um, I was fairly deferential and I, whatever. I think now I'd probably be a little less deferential. I wasn't as much of an expert in the industry then. Um, after that, I really educated myself and I would have had a much stronger response to, to what he was saying. Um, but I think it's really, really important when you go in front of uh, people to really understand your market very, very well. And then finally, tip five, and, and I'll sort of end on this, is that I think no matter what you, when you're trying to raise money, probably the single most important thing, and, and, and maybe this is stronger than a tip, is you have to believe in yourselves and believe in your product. Um, and I don't think you can do that naively. I think you need to put the effort, the time to understand your industry, to understand your competition, understand those initial customers. And once you do that, you can say, if you can still say, what I'm doing is incredible, you know, my customers are benefiting in ways that they couldn't otherwise. Um, and you could look anyone in the eye and fully believe that. I think ultimately that's how you raise the money. So.